Welcome back to 50 Fundamental Chain Reaction Mechanisms. This is episode 3, and we'll be covering string techniques. But if you haven't seen the previous episodes, I recommend that you catch up, and you can click right up here to go watch them. But we're going to dive right into the list with number 21, the string redirector. A string redirector is any small hole that a string passes through as it gets pulled, primarily for the purpose of preventing it from getting tangled with other strings or caught on objects. So here's an example of a situation that I admit is a bit exaggerated, but should be reminiscent of a problem that you might encounter. You can see that when you have a ton of strings that are all going in different directions and crossing over each other, all confined in a really small space, it can be very problematic to make sure that none of the strings get caught on each other. And that's where the string redirectors come in, because if you're careful about how you route each of the string paths, you can set it up in such a way that none of the strings ever touch. And like I said, that's a bit of an extreme example. Usually you'd only need maybe one or two string redirectors to prevent it from getting tangled. Personally, I also like to put a string redirector at the edge of the table when I have a weight pulling on a lever. At this point, you might be wondering what the difference is between a string redirector and a pulley. And I'll admit, there is absolutely a gray area there. And to demonstrate that, let's go to an example. Here we have a domino that falls over and pulls a string to release a ball. Now, if we add a string redirector, it still works, no problem. But if we reverse the direction of the domino and remove the string redirector, it doesn't work at all. But if we add the string redirector back in, it works again. So in this example, the string redirector is actually crucial to how the trick works. So does that make it a pulley? I would argue technically yes, but I really don't believe that the distinction here is all that important. We'll get to talking about pulleys next, and you'll see that in the middle, there's a lot of gray area between the string redirector and the pulley. But at the ends of the spectrum, they are two very distinct things, and it's important to know about each of them. So let's get on with it and talk about the pulley. Do you remember that example where I had the string redirector at the edge of the table? Well, let's take that example and keep the string redirector where it is, but we're gonna change the lever. So you'll notice that now it doesn't actually work because the lever doesn't move far enough to release the ball. And if you weren't already convinced of the overlap between string redirector and pulley, I'm about to make things even more confusing. By adding another string redirector closer to the base of the lever, we can actually change the angle that the string is pulling at. This means that the lever can now move out of the way more and properly release the ball. So here's another example of a pulley that looks a lot like a string redirector. One of my favorite ways of making an elevated lever is by using a module like this, because it allows you to route the string through the base of the lever, effectively turning that into a pulley point. And oftentimes if you have a horizontal lever, you will have to add an extra pulley point to make it rotate properly. And if we go back to one of our examples from the overbalanced lever in episode two, you may have noticed that I was using a pulley mounted at the side of the table to control the direction that the string was pulling in. Finally, let's take a look at some examples that are closer to what your mental picture of a pulley probably is. Connects wheels with the tires removed make fantastic pulleys, and you'll see them a lot in machines. And here's a traditional example of how you can use one to convert a downward force, the domino falling, into an upward force, the track lifting. Keep in mind, you don't have to use pulleys vertically. If you turn them on their side and use them horizontally, you can unlock all kinds of new motions, like in this example from Dominoes vs. Machines Round 7. One of the most useful ways of using a pulley is to reduce the friction of a string rubbing against the edge of a table. Here you can see just how much of a drastic difference the pulley actually makes. Even with all that weight pulling on the gear, the friction from the string rubbing against the table renders it completely ineffective. And here's a detailed close-up of the Connects module that I use to mount pulleys at the edge of the table. Feel free to use this if you'd like. So even with all these examples, we've still barely scratched the surface of what pulleys are capable of. So don't be afraid to get creative with pulleys and use them in pairs or more to accomplish all kinds of new and exciting motions. Number 23, string stopper. A string stopper is an object attached to some point on the string that prevents it from sliding through a string redirector. So let's take a look at what it actually is first. Here's an example of a traditional weight and string release. The domino falls off the table and pulls a string to release a ball. Now let's add two key ingredients, a string redirector at the edge of the table and a string stopper on the string itself. You'll notice that now, when the domino gets knocked off the table, it doesn't just fall directly to the ground. Instead, the string gets caught in the string redirector and the domino remains hanging from the table. So why is this useful? 
Well, first, if you have a large machine and a lot of dominoes that fall off the table, they will bounce in unexpected directions when they hit the ground, which means it can be quite difficult to track them all down again and figure out where they're supposed to go. But if you use string stoppers to keep the dominoes hanging from the table, it's very easy to track down where they came from, because ideally they'll be close by to where they fell from, but also they'll be in the same spot after every test. Secondly, dominoes hitting the floor and bouncing in unexpected directions is a huge problem at a live event, where there might be thousands of dominoes set up on the floor everywhere. So you can imagine what that worst case scenario might look like. Now, let's take a look at what exactly I use as a string stopper. I found that the most effective option is a gray spacer and one of the shortest connects rods assembled like this. This creates a very secure connection that does not slide easily. But if that method isn't an option for you, one alternative is to add a small tape flag to the string, which will work in a pinch, although I will caution you that it does have a failure point if you use it with too much weight. Number 24, string slice. A string slice is when instead of pulling directly on a string, you have an object pass through the path of a string to pull it. Here's an example of how a string slice can be used as a release mechanism, as an alternative to, say, a falling domino or a weight and string. Or if both endpoints of the string are attached to an object, this is a great way of pulling an object, or more accurately, pulling two objects closer to each other, in this case, the table and the top of the domino. One benefit, or one strength I would say, of the string slice is that no matter how long you make the string, it will still result in the same action, which means it effectively works as a very wide target for an object to hit. Because it doesn't matter at what point along the string gets hit, or for that matter, how hard it gets hit. It will result in the same output action, which means you can take potentially a very imprecise input force and funnel that imprecision into a very precise output force. And you can see this exact phenomenon in this clip from the Keyfinder, where I take a very imprecise action, the belt falling, and convert it into a very precise action, the board falling over. Next up, we're gonna take a look at a mechanism that you can almost think of as the inverse of the string slice, the string pusher. You see, a string slice is when an object pushes on a string that's connected between two points, and a string pusher is when a string connected between two points pushes an object. Here's an example so you can see what I mean. When the weight falls off the table, you can see that it pulls the string taut in between those two points, which pushes the object in between them, in this case the train. The advantage of using a string pusher as opposed to, say, a lever to push something is that it can be used to provide very small amounts of force, which sounds like a bad thing, but there are certain cases where you only want a little bit of force. Like in this example, where using a lever to push the hammer over provides way too much force, but a string pusher is just right. Actually, the string pusher is good for more than just pushing. Like in this clip from Just Offer Any Suggestion, I used it to lift an entire track. Number 26, string attractor. A string attractor is a weight attached at the midpoint of a string that's used to apply a force that constantly pulls the two endpoints of the string closer together. Here we see an example where I have a string with one endpoint attached to a block and one endpoint attached to a rotating track. And the string attractor in the middle pulls those two points together so that the track rotates until it meets the block. Nothing too impressive yet, right? Well, take a look at how resilient this mechanism is though. It doesn't matter how much I disturb it out of position, or even how aggressively I disturb it out of position, it's always able to consistently return the two endpoints of the string back to their meeting point, even with such a very small weight like a dice. And that particular property of the string attractor isn't exactly on full display in that example, but in this example you can really see why that can be useful. Let's say we have a little gate here that we want a ball to pass through and then on its way back get redirected off to a side path. The first thing we might think of doing is using a very small weight, in this case the dice again, that the ball is powerful enough to push through on its way up, but provides just enough force to return the gate back to its original position before the ball comes down so that it gets directed off to the side path. But you can see here that even that tiny amount of weight is still too much for the ball to push out of the way, mainly because of the friction of the string passing through those pulleys. And if we remove the weight entirely, well, obviously now there's no mechanism in place that will return the gate to its original position after the ball passes through, so the gate just stays open, and this clearly won't work at all. And that's where the string attractor comes in, 
particularly the property that I mentioned where it's very easy to move it out of position, but still very reliable in pulling those endpoints back together. Number 27, traveling string pull. A traveling string pull is when one end of a string is secured and the other end is attached to a moving object. And that moving object travels along until the string becomes taut, which causes the string to pull on something. Here's a very straightforward example using a rolling platform and a lever with a string attached to it. You can see that the lever stays in place as it rides along with the moving platform until it reaches the point where the string becomes taut, at which point the lever gets pulled, releasing the ball. So there are two key components to a traveling string pull. You've got both the object that's moving, in the last case, the rolling platform, and the object that's getting pulled by the string, or the lever. But the object that gets pulled doesn't always have to be attached to the moving object, like we just saw. And here's an example of what that might look like. You can see that the object that gets pulled by the string, the track, is separate from the object that moves, again, the rolling platform. One of my favorite ways of using a traveling string pull is to actually use it vertically, to tilt an object after it reaches a certain height maybe to dump a ball out of a cup, like this example from Kern Center Machine. Here's an example of combining both types of traveling string pulls into one trick. The tilting cup is an example where the object that moves and the object that gets pulled by the string are the same. But the tilting track is an example where the moving object and the object that gets pulled by the string are different. One super useful application of the traveling string pull is to activate, let's say, a weight by knocking it off of a ledge. Here's an example of what that looks like from 8-Ball Machine. And what's really interesting about this is it allows you to have an object moving in one direction, and then once it reaches a certain point, it releases a weight that pulls it back in the opposite direction. Number 28, string wrap. A string wrap is when you have a string wrapped around a circle, usually a connects wheel, in order to achieve an amount of rotation that wouldn't be possible if the string was just attached directly to a point on the circle. In other words, more than 180 degrees. That was a bit of a mouthful, so here are some visuals to show what I mean. You can see here that if we attach the string to the outside of the circle, in this case a gear, the best we can do is about 180 degrees. And since the ultimate goal here is to hit each of those three balls into the track on the left one time per revolution, we're gonna need a lot more rotation than that. The solution to this problem is, of course, the string wrap. And you can see that by wrapping the string around the connects wheel underneath the gear, we can achieve a lot more rotation. And the string wrap is particularly good for rotating gears like you've seen, but the possibilities really open up when you actually move the wheel instead of the string. Like in this example, where the wheel is mounted on a rolling platform, and the string unwraps from the wheel as the platform moves, resulting in this really interesting combination of both linear and rotational motion. What's really cool about this setup is that the unwrapping process doesn't have to start immediately. If you give the string a little bit of extra slack, you can actually treat it more or less like a traveling string pull, where an object moves, in this case the rolling platform, until the string becomes taut, at which point it starts to unwrap around the wheel. And here's an example of a trick that actually only works because of that delay between the rotational and linear motion. One other thing you can do with a string wrap that is a little bit harder to pull off is combine two string wraps in opposite directions so that while one of them unwraps, the other one wraps. What that allows you to do is create that combined linear rotational motion in both directions. So you can see here, as the platform slides to the right, the gear rotates like we saw before, but it also works when the platform slides back to the left. Number 29, disconnecting string pull. This is where you have a string pull on an object for some distance and then automatically disconnect. A disconnecting string pull is used when an object needs to continue moving, usually in a circle, or when an object needs to be moved again, usually in a different direction. And crucially, the weight pulling on that object needs to be removed, or else that motion won't be possible. How would you get a wheel to start spinning really fast? You might think, okay, I'll take a string and I'll attach it to the outside of the wheel, and I'll take a heavy weight and pull on it really fast. Okay, but we've already seen that when you attach a string to the outside of a circle, you can only really go 180 degrees. 
Here's an example, using a fidget spinner, of why that strategy doesn't work. But if we were to rebuild this so that the string could disconnect, you can see that the fidget spinner is able to continue rotating even after the string has disconnected. And that's how I was able to achieve this motion from Vsauce Machine. Again, where a fidget spinner is able to rotate multiple times. But the disconnecting string pull is not limited only to rotational motions. Take a look at this rolling platform where a string pulls it to one side, and once it reaches that side, it automatically disconnects. Here's a close-up of how the string is actually disconnecting from the rolling platform. And the observant among you might notice that this release mechanism bears a very strong resemblance to the overbalanced lever. Number 30, magnetic string break. Using a motor in a machine is a blessing and a curse. On one hand, it is a good source of a reliable, consistent, oftentimes pretty strong input force. But on the other hand, it's a constant force. So you either have to build in a way of turning off the motor after a certain time, or you have to be very cautious about building a machine that won't get damaged no matter how long the motor runs for. Or you can get a little bit creative. And that's where the magnetic string brake comes in. Here's a bit of an exaggerated example of what you don't want to do. This is what it looks like without a magnetic string brake. The idea behind a magnetic string brake is that you have two lengths of string held together by a magnetic connection. And this whole system will behave functionally like one continuous piece of string, except at a certain point. Once the force on the string exceeds a certain amount, it will just break apart at the magnetic connection. And this is how you solve the motor issue, because you can still use the string to pull an object into place, but once the object is in place, instead of jamming the motor or breaking the whole machine, the string will simply break apart. So those are the string techniques. And that's it for episode three. In episode four, we're gonna be looking at advanced connect techniques. And if the episode's out by now, you can click right here to watch it. If you liked the video, leave a comment down below telling me what you thought. And if you want to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next episode, you can click right here. I'm Jack of All Spades 98, and I'll see you in the next video.